When was the last time you were asked a question that you stumbled to answer? I don't mean in an advanced algebra or mean of life kind of way. We know from Douglas Adams the answer to that is 42. I mean a question that made you go, did they just ask that? The reason I ask is that I was in a coffee shop a little while back. I was on a lazy Sunday after a hard week. Got myself a coffee, found a cozy corner, and sat there reading my book. Out of nowhere, a stranger walks by, leans in, and says, you're so inspirational. Sorry, what? <laughs> How have I become inspirational by sitting here drinking my coffee? It makes me laugh when people get awkward around disability. One in seven people are disabled in some way. Some disabilities are visible, and some are invisible. Some people get support, and some people deal with it in their own way. Disability is a very personal thing. What I'm going to talk about today is something that affects 1.2 million people in the UK. That's 1.2 million wheelchair users. This is my experience of disability and what I've learned in 16 years of using a wheelchair. Summer 2006 was shaping up to be a great one. I'd moved up to the Lake District, got a job working behind a bar, living with some great friends. Every day was an adventure. Kayaking, hiking, camping. I was having a blast. That all came to an end on June the 21st. I was out on my motorbike, going along country lanes. It's bad weather on the day. Typical British summer. And I lost control going around the corner. I end up on the wrong side of the road and in the path of an oncoming truck. I don't remember the accident itself. What I do know is that when I woke up, life was in stark contrast to what it had been a week earlier. This was summer 2006 for me. 14 weeks of lying on my back. I was paralyzed and unable to do anything for myself. Eating, drinking, going to the loo, washing, even breathing had become difficult. A life-changing injury at 19 years old. The highlight of my 20th birthday, just three weeks later, was having my mum feed me a piece of cake. At a time when I should be recognizing so much more independence, I'd regressed to being looked after by mum. This was the lowest point for me. I was scared. I'd never known anyone disabled before. I thought I knew what disability was, but it had always been in my periphery. While 14 weeks seemed like it would last forever, it didn't. I know you're getting serious down vibes right now, but don't worry. <laughs> because this is the part of the story where things changed. You see, as soon as I got out of hospital, I made the decision that I wasn't going to let this beat me. I was going to start looking at ways to move forwards. Start figuring out ways to make things better for myself. Now that my legs didn't work, I needed to find another way to get around. 
often seen as a symbol of disability, I was going to learn that the wheelchair would be my key to freedom. Wheelchairs are kind of simple, aren't they? I mean, it's a seat with wheels. But it's got a few other features on there that make it incredibly useful in getting around. So we've got brakes to lock us in place. We've got a foot plate, keeping our feet out of the way in tight spaces. We've got wheels that pop off, make it easy to get in your car. And the position of the axle makes the chair tippy. Dangerous when you're a newbie. Whoops. <laughs> but really useful in getting over obstacles once you've mastered that balance point. Having the skills to use any piece of equipment is essential. Having the skills to use a wheelchair is no different. Well, as much as I do enjoy some time out of my chair on the floor, I think it's going to be more comfortable to do the rest of the talk from the chair. Oh. It was such a strange feeling leaving the hospital. I mean, so much had changed, but at the same time, so much hadn't. Still young and adventurous, willing to take risks, happy to step out of my comfort zone, try new things. I mean, physically, I changed, but the things that made me, me, were still there. All I wanted was a sense of normality. I wanted to be doing those things that everyone else my age was doing. I decided to go back to a degree that I dropped out of. And in doing that, I needed to figure out what other things I need in place to make that happen. I found a wheelchair accessible flat. I learned to drive, got a car with hand controls. Wanting to stay fit, I started looking at different sports. I joined a wheelchair basketball team. I was doing okay. I was getting back to living life. What I didn't know at that point was just how much this new life using a wheelchair had in store for me. It was only when I went to a wheelchair skills training session that I got a real insight into what could be done. It was brilliant. Less than a year after my own injury, I was learning things from guys who'd been using wheelchairs for more than 10 years. And that was a lifetime in my mind. Wheelchair skills are those techniques that allow you to maneuver your chair, get around, do the things you want to. Let's take a look at a couple of them. So it all starts with a good pushing technique. I can't remember the last time I went down a flat road. They don't exist. And sometimes there's not going to be a lift or ramp available, and steps might be the only way. And carrying a coffee, whether it's at home, going from your kitchen to your sofa, or in a cafe, going from the counter to your table. It's very helpful. Not inspirational. <laughs> Everything we did in that training challenged what I thought I knew about disability. Now that I'd learned the skills in the safe environment of a sports hall, I wanted to take them out into the world and see what I could do. Learning wheelchair skills changed the way I looked at everything. All of a sudden, the world seemed more possible and less impossible. Fast forward 
four years and two and a half thousand miles to a cargo ship crossing the Caspian Sea. I'm sat there with five cards in my hand. Pretty good cards. I take a sip of my vodka and I look across the table. I'm looking at the faces of four Russian sailors that I'm playing poker against, trying to figure out if I should fold or double down. Now, this is a million miles away from where I'd been just a couple of years earlier, lying in that hospital bed, unable to do anything for myself. And over the last few years, my trips have got a bit more adventurous each time I went away. I've been pushing myself that bit further. This trip actually started out in Bangladesh. I was volunteering over at, the, at a hospital that supports people with injuries similar to mine. I remember one night, we were sat around the fire. I had a map out, and I was showing everyone all the places that had been. One of the guys leaned over, and he said, oh, you don't actually live that far away from us. It's only that far on the map. When he said that, something sparked in my head. And in a moment of inspiration, or madness, let you be the judge of that, I thought, how much fun it would be. What an adventure it would be. How it would be the ultimate test of wheelchair skills. That instead of flying home from Bangladesh, I'd come home using buses, trains, and boats. I call the blog Rolling Back Home, traveling 5,000 miles across 15 countries, spanning two continents, and only just the one set of wheels. Bit cheesy, I know. <laughs> but it was the same skills I'd learned all those years earlier that meant I could do this travel in. Whether it was getting onto an inaccessible train to cross Kazakhstan, or pushing up a hill in Japan, or going up steps in Nepal to get on the back of an elephant. Those same wheelchair skills have now let me cross continents. Wheelchair skills have allowed me to do some amazing travels. But the real difference is made in day-to-day -day life. I can't imagine what my life would have been without wheelchair skills. I wouldn't have done all the things I have. I wouldn't be the person I am today. Well, that brings me to the end of my story. Well, the end of the prologue, at least. But before I wrap up, I'd like to leave you with something to think about. For all that I do, I know that I'm in the minority. The vast majority of wheelchair users don't have access to this training and the freedom that comes along with it. But it doesn't have to be that way. It's not about being inspirational in a coffee shop. It's about having the skills that you can use in everyday life doing the things that you want to do. So here's a question that makes me stumble. Why would we not do that? Thank you.